so I'm going to make a new pod called books. And then instantly we get uh, the, the ability to have a name, a slug, machine name, ISBN, uh, label of ISBN. And this is now column type of date, number, boolean, single line text, which is fine. Uh, you can make it required, you can save it. Uh, machine name for author. Another single line text. And then cover. And this is a file upload. So you notice here you have the ability to organize this where you want to go. You can get rid of these and delete them. You can get rid of the name because that's their unique way of uh, saving that. Um, I also want to make a top level menu on the couple covers or books too, so it doesn't get conflict with the other one. Uh, and then we're going to save the settings. Now, the only thing about this that is a little wonky is that it does Ajax a lot. So if you notice, we don't have. Uh, do the <laughs> uh, so we haven't, it hasn't updated yet because it's all been Ajax, so you have to refresh the page and then you'll see books to down here. So I want to add a new books. So here again it's name, um, iClub, permalink, you can leave a blank, it will automatically ISBN, uh, author, and then cover. Now, you don't see the preview here, uh, but what's great though is that you can, you can select multiples and it will upload them all, uh, so that's really quite nice. And you'll end up with lots of them here, and you can hit X and it will delete it. So then, I'm saved. I can also go browse, and then there's my clips. Type of books, and it's added this date. Alright, so back to pods. I want to create a template for books, book list and in this template is going to just be those those variables and however other wrapped template I wanted to have so I want to have the name the author the ISBN and the what's called cover cover but I want it to be the, the GUI the GUI ID with it Graphical user ID, what is it called? GUI. How do you pronounce it? GUI. Well, it's, uh, it's WordPress's, it's WordPress's uh, stored variable for the URL of a graphical object. Okay, so that's the book list, and I'm going to save the changes. Success. But I'm going to have a page now. I'm going to grab this code. This is all the events. I'm going to add books. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a new pod called books, and I'm going to grab that class and pass books uh, pod to that class, store it as a record, you can call this books if you want to keep it straight. Um, if you have multiple ones on, in a function, I'd like to keep the you know, uh, namespace collision. Uh, so I'm going to find 25 approved open events, I'm not going to do that, because the books. I'm going to find the records, sort by name, ascending, and I have about 25 of them. I can also paginate, it comes with automatic pagination, which is great. Uh, a search ability, just by uh, defining it right here. Uh, and then I want to echo the record of book list. There's pre-code, which happens in the header before everything. You can change the page title. You can use a page template of whatever you want to use. Um, and I'm going to hope, go ahead and save this change and uh, cross the fingers. All right, so now go to books. So there it is right here, iClub, ISBN. I just passed the uh, GUI. I didn't pass this to the image. There's some, like, some helpers, they call them, to get the thumbnail, to get the medium, to get the large. Very easy. But if I want to get that as an image, I just wrap it in an image tag for right now. Saved. So, you can, this, I mean, you see how fast it is? I can have a hundred fields and a hundred different types of data to collect, and it takes you just as much time to do something as simple as book. So, is there a reason to use the page thing within modules for making your own custom page template? Uh, yes, and the reason is that you, pass, uh, you can pass the slug or the ID there. Uh, for instance, uh, this is the 
list page, and if I have another one, it'll, it'll list them all down. Uh, but if I want a unique, I can separate that and say, uh, for, this, for instance, let's go back to the events one that I created. So here's a list of events. If I had multiple ones, they'd be listed here. But I can make this linked as an anchor tag, and then go to a detail page. And then if you notice in there, under events, and then this slug is being passed to the script, processed, and then uh, essentially echoed to the page. Uh, so why create a page for it? You can also, there's a short code for, for pods which is really great too. If you just want this only on this page and you have a, you don't want to start creating all this stuff, you can actually do pods, short code, and just place it directly into a WordPress page or post. It'll grab all that. It'll grab the, uh, the presentation, it'll grab the logic, and it'll just fit it out on the page pretty, pretty fast. Too. Um, okay, and then let's see, just finishing up. Um, questions? I wanted to make sure everyone knew, uh, with the uh, firm media, uh, we're doing a webinar on Tuesday. We're going to talk about how, how to harness internet video marketing to promote your business online. So how to shoot video, put them on YouTube, Vimeo, Medicaid Bay, and how to do it for SEO. It's great. Uh, you can go to firmmedia.com slash webinar. Um, I'm at, uh, at Tom Meredith, and you can go to at firm media SEO. Um, thank you so much for your time, and uh, appreciate any questions after too. You got lunch break. Uh, like I said, there's a cafeteria next door, uh, just on the other side of the uh, uh, water feature. Uh, we'll have about an hour, an hour and a half break. So uh, enjoy. They're, they're um, well, for, for, for the LA Times, I needed to be able to do Ajax, I needed to be able to do this, I needed to do related picks and all these things. It was really quite complicated, so I knew I was going to be using pods. Um, but uh, seriously, it's like, if you use this, it helps you so much, and you deliver an end result to your client that they are, and you're proud of, and it's easy for them to use. Because my, my main goal is to deliver something to an end client, who doesn't know anything about HTML can go in there and upload and do this and I don't have to you know wrap this with this or do that because it needs to look this way. Um, so that's my end my end goal all the time is to make it easy. So I have a field notification that it's still separating so you can't Based off of pods, you can release to your audience. 
Uh, so you can't do that with Magic Field so much. It's really about publishing content, and Pods is really about publishing, but also getting uh, input and a lot of other things. Uh, uh, do you know how this might work with multi-site? Let's say you have a theme that relies pretty heavily on this, like the testimonial uh, recognition kind of thing. If a new person signs up, it's easy enough to auto-activate a plugin, but would they have, would you be able to have the custom right field right kind of activated for them? Uh, oh, so like you're setting up that oh, so you're saying, you're saying I want something where someone signs up and it's out of the box, ready for them, right. that's based off of this. Um, with WordPress and you, I think there's a way of cloning when they sign up. Um, you have to fine tune that. Never gotten to that with this okay. yet, but I would look into that. Sounds great. Should be like an auto export or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can export all these, and then you know, essentially, if you're just building a new WordPress and you, if you if you have a script to set up and you're doing a SQL, you know, call and you know, build all those tables already and have it all ready. But I mean, you have to fine tune that and test it. It's not just something that you just the UI is um, is really quite nice, uh, but it, it's a lot of fine tuning you need to do PHP. It's not like just a user interface to fine tune it, but it allows you to order, and it's a click and drag, kind of like the images uh, in the attachments. So you can say this is the order that it's in. Um, obviously, we've all got the place of like you know. You guys have used uh, my page order, yeah. which uh, you know you don't have to put 10 or 11 in the page order. Uh, it's the same type of thing, and it allows you to click and drag and, and drag and drop the order and then save that order. Uh, so you end up just creating a an order ID and then allow you tell it to Fox UI that you want that order ID to be saved once you order it. But you, and I, I play with a little bit. You can hide things from certain people. You can show things. So you can pretty much curate how it looks, um, how how this looks over here. The editing, this would say order, and I can click and drag the order and do some additional things there. But uh, it extends a little bit, but it gets a little technical. So you don't really need it. To. You don't need it. No. Questions? So how do you control the update cycle? Is it you do something more to see something pause and things a little bit? How do we update it? How do I yeah. in a development cycle or in a production cycle? Uh, so your client says, I want this, <laughs> and then you say, okay, well, you want to stage it. Uh, if you're doing like vanilla staging, that's really quite easy. So tell me something you want to you want to have. Tell me something you want to organize, like say, for example. The look. So not the data structure, but the look. Then that's the front end. So that's not even part of pause so much. I mean, you can wrap it in the template. So I can say, here's my template for um, event details. And I want this to be, say, bold. Right? The name to be bold. Uh, so this is the detail. I go ahead and save that change, and it says there's a success. And then when I get here now, the name is bold. If I want to make it H2 or H1, just CSS, uh, it's just HTML, CSS will allow you to do that. So, is that what you're asking? How simple is it to make changes to the, to the look and feel of this data? Very easy. So you have access to all of the variables that you have collecting, and you have access to be able to present it in any fashion you want to present it. Uh, let me walk through, uh, do we have time to walk through uh, right panels real quick? Uh, so say uh, we were talking before, what were we talking about and we got cut off books? So I want to create a, a right panel for, say, a publisher, and they have multiple books. So I say um, books. Or is this right panel that I want to, I want to collect data from? If I had a template called a books and it presented in a certain way, I'd select it here. And I would recommend doing that first and assigning it anyway, because uh, once you start creating them, it's stored. So it's just better to start first with a uh, template that you assign to. You can uh, have a, the, the page parent of about, so it could be our books. 
And uh, if I have one or multiple, so this is like if I have recognition page, I only have one page, or I have multiple pages, uh, usually I keep that on the multiple. And then here's turning off and on the poster page. That's the big content area, the content. I can turn that off if I don't need it. And I can get rid of all this stuff, which just flutters up anyway if I don't need it for an admin to, uh, to see. All right, so this is finishing up. And then I want to create a group. If, if I'm going to create a group, that's going to be for, um, say, uh, quotes or testimonials about the book. But I just want to gather information about the book. So I want the uh, ISBN. So we would say that this is the ISBN. You can put help text if you need it to be there. It can be duplicated. The order, this is just where it is, the hierarchy on the page. Uh, it'll do it by alphabetical unless you do it there. Everything is set to zero. You can make it required. And I want it to be a text box. That's fine. Continue. It tells you how long you want it to be. It's done. So this is the ISBN. And then I want to say, um, uh, author. Author, very great. Author. So this is the, the top one is the name that you pull. And this is, you can say author, um, first name, last name, or last name, first name, whatever you want to do here. You can kind of give them some hints. You can also do author last name, author first name, if you want to capture it that way in the database. So you can search by it. It's also a text box. But let's do something else like, uh, let's do a book cover. All right, so this is going to be an image. And instantly it gives you this magic field CSS class. You can change that. And then you get to this cryptic page that says options. There used to be like in Flutter, all these options you can do. You can crop in, you can change it black and white. You can do these. You still have access to those, but they don't give you those hints here. Um, you can make the max height, you know, 300 pixels, max width of 300. And you can also do any custom extra things to it. I'm going to finish this up. All right, so I've got ISBN, author, and cover. Um, so let's go to books now. So you can manage a new. So let's create a new book. And we can say uh, book title. And here's the you know, content. I kept it on there. If you scroll down, we got ISBN. So if you go to, let's see, Amazon. Uh, give me a book title. What Fight Club? What Fight Club? The word for Fight Club. fan, huh? All right, so we got Fight Club, right? So we can go here. And, awesome look out, and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? There's no nice ISBN for movies there. Yeah. 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 All right. So you put the ISBN here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> testing, right? Who knows the spell of Columbia?
So, so we have a portfolio and audience and categories. Um, here's a did you know module. So this uh, uses the jQuery cycle all and just slide, you know, this little slideshow there. Um, and then what's really great is where I'm using Pods heavily is this portfolio section. And they have over 80 brands of content that they need to organize and structure. So if someone just asks for searching, um, I can say I want brand X here. And then you'll end up with uh, brand X filter results. And if I want to go to brand X, we have capturing the title, a logo, and this also links to their website. We have the contact information, the phone number, the email address, the website. We have an image. We've got all of this content here. But really important here is all of these related data. We have platforms that are printed digital. You cross-reference. You have related fields. Um, you have ad targets. And this is really what's important here. I'll show you what the back end of that looks like. But essentially, there's all these, this taxonomy that's built that you can organize and structure each of these brands. And then ultimately, there's a plan a campaign area where I can say, oh, I want all gender of male or men. And it does a, an Ajax query on the database. And then you can end up ultimately building your results and then finding what those are and submitting this to the sales. So really quick, really easy, um, but, but I'll show you how simple it is to build that. Uh, OK, so back to this one. Let's play it. So this is uh, you know, the WordPress Media Kit, or, uh, the Lally Times Media Kit. And again, we'll walk you through that. Campaign okay, Planner. So on the back end, um, this looks like any other page, but this is all pods. So you have the ability to manage the brands. And each brand has all these options. So you've got the title. Um, you've got a permalink slug that you can edit, where it automatically creates it for you. You've got the logo, the image, the URL for uh, the actual website for the asset, um, the contact name and title. You saw the stuff on the front end. The short description uh, is is seen uh, elsewhere on another another page. And then down here is really important. These are all those filters and those those categories of taxonomy. And I can choose multiple selections here of which ones this pertains to, and then ultimately at the end, on the front end, um, display that. Again, just like magic fields, I have the option of putting it in here or not. Uh, so I can add a new one or edit them. And here's what it looks like when you're building pods. It's all through the, uh, through the graphical user interface. It's really simple to use. Um, you add a new pod, it comes with a name and a slug, and then you just start building. So here you've got the machine name, which would be whatever you call it, to pull it in. But then what do, what do you call it to, when they see it? You can call it anything else, you can capitalize it, you can name it, you can put quotes around it, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got column types of date, or file, or, or pick relationship, which would be your, your relationship database. Um, and then what's really great is that you can make it required, or unique, or multi-select, which you saw with multiple. Uh, color selections. You've got a display helper and an input helper. Those are really great because they'll say, how is this presented or how does this help you input that data? Um, and you can also put a comment so that you can talk to uh, your admins or maintenance people. Uh, rather than put some of these things into the template, would you ever consider using like the PHP execute plugin to put into like the content of your post? That. No, I'll show you how you can, there's two ways you can do it. There's a pods template, and then you can do it in your actual template as well. Okay. Uh, but here, I mean, you can see this actually list goes on. There's about 30 different options here. Um, and you'll see some of them are like the related brands one is a big brand, and that would say there's an area, it's kind of like categories. Um, well, with other brands, you can cross reference which one's related to this one. Um, and then down here, you can say I want it to be in the side menu and I want it to be called brands. And you can also say I want the detail page to be portfolio slash the slug that you created. And you have all those other options too. Very powerful um, to do to something very simple, but, but also very uh, powerful if you need to do something really complicated. Uh, this is how the did you know function works. Um, when I started using pods, I started putting in the templates and putting in the pod pages and I decided 
you know what, that just clutters everything. So I'm going to end up building functions for this and just calling the function the template so I can keep everything together. So essentially I just build it a function. And then what pods has is, it's essentially just a class. You say I want a new class of pod, did you know? Uh, so you pass it the name of the pod that you named it. And it's in a record, and then you say, find the records. I'm randomizing these, and I only want 10 of them. And I'm going to echo the uh, did you know this template. So it's that quick and that simple to, to get this. So I'm talking like, you can have the did you know list in about five minutes. Uh, so here's what the did you know list template looks like. So I'm wrapping it in, um, in uh, HTML and some CSS tags. And if you notice that the, uh, the text for that is just, it's just a template tag, um, at text. And then um, I have my source, which is just at source in curly brackets. Do you define your uh, function and your HWD functions uh, in the name of any template or display in the back of the camera? There's a lot of ways you can do that. As ever you see fit, if you just want to work in your functions, you want to work in your templates, you can do that. Uh, this is pretty simple because it lets the admins uh, interact with it and, and make changes quickly without having to go directly to the PHP. Uh, the pages, uh, this is kind of what it looks like here. I can create a new page, and the brand with the asterisks essentially is passing that asterisk, which is the, the ID or the slug, to your script. So here I'm grabbing um, pod URL variable, the last variable, which is the last uh, string in the URL, is going to be the ID. And I want to say, I want a new brand with this ID, and I'm going to show the, the template of the brand detail. So if you, if you are grabbing lots of records, you don't need to do that, because you're, you're just saying, I want the new brand. So I'm grabbing everything from brand, and I can paginate, I can search. Here, I want to look for one, and that one is the one from this slug. And I'm passing that slug to the, uh, to the class, and then end up showing that template for the detail. Can I ask a question? Yes. I'm just a little bit confused on how this is different than custom post type with custom post uh, uh, taxonomies. Uh, this has, I mean, a lot, but I've only used the other way. Is there, is there a time where you, like, how do you choose one or the other? Or is it completely different thing? Uh, it's, you can choose one or the other based off of what you need, uh, how simple you need it to be, and what your limitations are. Uh, if, if this gets pretty complicated in writing, uh, Writing, you know, checking for arrays and grabbing variables and doing this, and but you can you can actually do you know custom SQL. You can uh, do joins. You can do some really complicated AJAX things here uh, that that I found are more complicated the other way around. However, uh, when I get to that like one of the last slides, the comparison, uh, this is like that. Did you know it's not a page? Yeah, I like that. I like it's that. not a page. It's yeah. and I'm using it multiple times on the site, so I'm using it on. Um, on, on a small business management page, I'm grabbing it and sticking it in the right hand column, and I can make it look different than on the home page, but I just want that data. Uh, so I was always scratching my head in the past saying, I want to do this, but I don't want to create a post or a page for it, and it belongs in multiple places. So how do I do all that? You know? yeah. So Pods really helps out with that. So, like for events and stuff like that, it's really great. Uh, but let me see, let me get to the, you can also have roles. So permission-based uh, editors and authors and contributors can edit these or not. Um, okay, so the comparison, we can talk about that. Quick one, um, you do the image, I was actually looking at the uh, Wikipedia thing here. Uh, on the image thing, when you're, oh, no, upload, when you're uploading an image, yeah. uh, can you automatically, if you want to link it to a, to a bigger image, so you have the light box effect, or just link it to a page, can you set it up in, uh, in the same custom field, or you have to yet another magic field? No, that's a great question, because I've always, um, when, when I work with galleries or images, I usually use the attachments, because you have so much more already built in. It's just so easy, there's this ordering, there's all this, you can put a title, you can link it somewhere, there's lots of stuff you can do there. Um, when you get into galleries and custom fields, it does get a little complicated, because when you upload an image, you don't have access to its title, you don't have access to its alt tag. So I'm still trying to figure out how to extend that part. Uh, but this is really for thumbnails or other images. But you do have the large image, you have the thumbnails, 
um, you can add additional text fields below that as a group for an image that has title and this and that, and then pull that on the front end if you need to. That's what I'm saying. So basically, it will be, be additional management fields. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Well, a field by itself will just be once on the page, but you can, it essentially is a group of data. So like, like the wine, I want this set of data to be together, and I want to duplicate that set. But uh, if I want just a subtitle, I can duplicate subtitle, but it's not, it's only by itself. You have those options. You have the options, yeah. Duplicated. I'll show you that there. Um, uh, I was, uh, as far as pod versus to go in that direction yeah. as a stability and, and client. I'll show you, yeah, the bear statement. Okay. Oh, bear statement. What about searchability? Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but yes, um, searchability on magic fields is built into WordPress because it's now just, it's really just a page or a post, but it has, uh, if you're just really using its, um, uh, its custom fields for each page or post. But then it's passing through the magic fields on the back end of the admin area before you actually see it. So you can interact with those and, and they're extending that essentially. Um, with pods, it's a completely different table. It's a relationship table, it's great, but you have additional search. So it's not built into the main search, uh, but you can do a really great searching with that. Um, I had a question about uh, one thing that I'm concerned about with Magic Fields that I've used it before and I absolutely love it is, um, let's say a year or two down the road of the plugin got discontinued and um, there was a conflict with a new version of WordPress. That, that plugin is so crucial. I know the site would break if they turn that plugin. Um, is it extremely complicated if you had a site with Magic Fields going and converted it to a regular uh, custom field? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> because right now this is a whole hypothetical situation, yeah. but um, I've never gotten to that point before. Um, magic fields to me right now is sort of keeping it up, but it's just custom fields. So you're just looking through this filter of data, um, but uh, that's up to you to decide if you, you know, that's for every plugin. This plugin is crucial to my installation. Uh, if they don't keep this up, what do I do? Uh, when that went from two to three, that was a lot of plugins, right? So it's important. Definitely a good question to ask. No need to plug in options. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so again, uh, you know, what about even more complicated data that you have? Um, how do you structure that? What if you have this really complicated thing you need to do something with? Um, I found pods to be really crucial and really, really well, well built. I felt. Um, I built uh, the Los Angeles Times Media Group Media Kit on uh, on WordPress uh, using pods and um, also Magic Fields. So you can use them together. It's not like they're they're conflict with each other. Uh, so there's some areas that have the need for for Magic Fields. Some areas that have the need for pods. Um, and in the Media Kit, for instance, I had you know little things like Did you know? And there's things that are built and being used and repurposed through the whole site. You have a little module that you want over here, but it pulls data. Uh, so how do you get this to be used on the whole site? Well, this is a, uh, a pod. So it's called a Did You Know pod that I built. And the Did You Know pod has a statement and the source, and that's it. And then I could um, essentially just use it as equal to pull it out and say I want 10 of them, I want to be random. And then they use jQuery to, uh, to do a little slideshow. Um, the, uh, actually, let me just go to the website right now. Thank you, Mark. 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 Thank I mean, I and I'm also here representing Burr Media, which is an internet marketing firm that I uh, partners up with uh, Kurt and Chris is going to be here in about an hour. Um, we do internet marketing, SEO, SEM. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about designing with WordPress, uh, advanced custom view, advanced use of custom fields. Uh, a little bit about me. 
uh, been doing since 1995. Uh, got started with uh, PHP, uh, Perl. I uh, don't really do that too much anymore. Um, and then lately I've been doing a lot of JS, uh, CSS, and uh, a little bit of Django and Ruby. Uh, BFA in Graphic Design and Art Center, graduated in 2004. And around the same time, I've been using WordPress. So it's been about six years now. Um, and uh, when I first started using WordPress, right out of the box, um, I realized that there's really great things that you have. You've got, uh, you have a title, you have attachments, and you have content. Um, well, you got an expert as well, and some custom field things too. However, I had a big need to, uh, to take whatever the design I had and repurpose any of those elements and be able to manage that uh, in, a, in a content management system. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Croft wrote, uh, and this is a quote from Alyssa Hart. Have you guys read Alyssa Hart before? Sure. Great, great blog. Um, this is actually uh, interesting. I was, I was packing this up last night, finalizing it, and uh, there's a great thing on content management systems. Um, uh, that just posted this week. And uh, Jeff Croft says that content management ought to include structuring, organizing, searching on, filtering, and easily modifying your content. Um, essentially, it ought to make your content more useful simply by virtue of the content being in the system. Uh, with WordPress, however, I needed more. I didn't just need a title and attachments. And I need to be able to like capture logos and capture this and capture that and, and make it really easy uh, for anybody to get content in there. It wasn't me, just for my client to hand it off to them. Uh, so here I have a, a design from, from, a, uh, from a project I'm working on, and obviously I can use the attachments here for the slideshow, and I can use a title up for the uh, title of the page, but then I have like maybe a parent page that I can organize this and structure it for subtitles. Uh, there's the content, but what about all this stuff down here at the bottom? You know, I have to, I have to capture a, a logo and additional subheads and contents for, say, a winery. Uh, so here I've got a wine title and a wine label and uh, wine descriptions and wine details. And then what about this? I have a vineyard map and I have a vineyard logo. So all this stuff out of the box, WordPress doesn't give you. So I was always continually trying to seek out a way to capture that data and then ultimately be able to present it where I want to present it on the page. So you know, it's easy to be able to do a front end, but then how do you get it up there, how do you get it down here? It's just part of this big post area. So, how about custom fields? You have this great thing, everyone knows about custom fields, right? You guys can use this a little bit. Essentially, you create, you know, is there a pointer or someone just have that up there? Uh, I'll point my hand. Uh, so, you know, you create a, a new custom field and you put whatever value in there. That doesn't, that's not really very transparent for uh, giving to your client who doesn't know anything about HTML who ends up clicking on that select and there's like a hundred things in there and it's just really confusing. Uh, there's some plugins that allow you to kind of wrangle this a little bit more. Uh, however, uh, what I'm going to talk about now is magic fields first and then we get into pods. And uh, initially, there was a great plugin called Custom Write Panel that Rhyme Code built uh, a little while ago. Uh, and then Flutter from Fresh App decided to take that on and they said, we're going to make this a little better. And they, they kind of made it a little more stable and then they decided to kind of drop off, and these guys, uh, Hunk and Nugent, decided to uh, work on what's called Magic Fields. So that was pretty recent, about last year, they kind of took it over. And then you're like, oh, I have Flutter, and now I have Magic Fields. And I think um, Magic Fields is a lot more stable, and people are continuing to work on it, so that's really great. Um, you can find all these just by you know, going and add a new plugin and typing Magic Fields, but you can also do magicfields.org. Uh, so it's Magic Fields. The great thing about it is that you've got these little items that you can program. It's very simple. I'll show you how to do it in a second. So say you just want a text box. You want a new input, like say a subhead, or an author, or, or uh, an ISBN. You've got a text box there. You've also got a multi-line text box. So this is just essentially using WordPress's uh, um, input area to create, you have bold, italic, you know, you can go switch back and forth to HTML. So this essentially extends that post body content area you have to have another one. So now you have two, three, you can keep adding more of these as, as you see fit to your design. Um, you have check boxes, you can have multiple ones. Um, you've got check lists, lists uh, list boxes, we can check multiple of these off there. 
Um, what I love though is this image uh, upload area. You can choose a file, you can put a URL in, and it will upload to your system. So this is not even part of the attachments. This is just in addition to. This is, this is almost like a post thumbnail. But you can have 10 different ones here. So you can have, you know, if you have a car auto, you can say this is the interior, this is the exterior, and separate it so that the end client, uh, when I'm handing the project off, can ultimately know, oh, that's for this, that's for that. And what's great about this too is that you can say, I want it to be this size at the end, and I can constrict it. So if a client uploads a huge file, it will great deal, you know, scale it down to whatever you need to. Um, and I think it uses PHP for that, and you can control how that's configured. Date fields are really great. It's a little uh, pick date, start date, end date for an event. Uh, it's great for that. Um, audio upload, and actually it'll have the, uh, ultimately has the, the Swift plugin, so you can play audio too. Um, and sliders. I really haven't used this too much, but it's a possibility. Color pickers. Uh, you even have, uh, in addition to images, you have files, you have related posts, so you can say, I want this page, this new type of content, to be related to this page or this post. And you can make those duplicates, so you continue to have multiple different types of relationships. Uh, that gets into some heavy PHP, not heavy, but you got arrays to deal with and things that you have to get with on the, on the template. There's a lot more there. This is how easy it is to get that extra field that you just added. So if I added something called subhead, I typed get subhead. And then instantly you have it on that post. So it's really very quick and easy. Um, for instance, uh, here's a project I'm working on right now, and, and they have a recognition page. So they wanted to have multiple different recognitions. They have a title, they have a body. Yes, I could use posts for this, and I could have a category of recognition, but then I have this extra clutter of, well then I have an extra page for the detail page for that, that's kind of out there in a space and it's gonna be indexed, and I don't want that to happen. So what do I do here? I can use a custom right panel. And here, if you notice, um, I have a, a recognition. So you can just add a new right panel called recognition. And then you can end up editing fields and editing the right panel. And you can also export this. So if you're developing it on one server, you can end up capturing all that data and reusing it. Um, so here's what my recognition uh, right panel looks like when you're actually in uh, developing it. So there's no, I haven't touched any lines of code yet. I've just started developing this. Uh, so I wanted to do, I wanted a group that I can duplicate. So this recognition group, I created a group, and I created fields that are part of that group. So date, title, and content. Um, so here's, here's a recognition. The group can be duplicated. And then ultimately it ends up in the sidebar, just like a page or a post. So it's almost like this new, you know, custom uh, post types, but it's more. Here, however, I chose that it's a page, and I only have one of them, because I don't want to create all these recognition pages. So if you know, notice, you'll see there is no add new underneath that. It's just edit, because it's just one page. And then ultimately, this is what it looks like in WordPress. Um, so I have the recognition, so I, I, I can keep the title. I decided to opt out and just get rid of all the body of the uh, content. And then I have this group, which is uh, the recognition group. I have a date, I have a title, and then I have the content. And then what's really interesting too, you notice here, we have this little uh, plus, and it shows number one. I can click on this, and it will create this new one instantly. Uh, I can also click and drag and order these, so I can click this, and then it just moves with, uh, you know, clicks and drags, and moves up and down, so I can order it. So it knows in queue what the order is on that page. Uh, and this is what it looks like on the template. So. Um, I just wrapped it with a uh, you know, classic recognition so I can hit it with CSS if I need to. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just getting the group, which is uh, built into the, uh, the functions of uh, magic fields. Uh, so it's called recognition. And then I'm storing that in a variable called props, you know, giving some more props. Um, <laughs> so I'm, first I want to make sure that it's arrays, because I'm going to loop through it with for each uh, loop. And if it's not, then it's going to it's going to be a problem. So I'm going to say it's an array. If it is, then I'm going to uh, assign it to, uh, to a, a local variable here, prop. And then I'm going to iterate through the date, and the title, and the content. And I usually end up, uh, you know, printing print R to uh, find out any of the <coughs> that I have there, just so I can like view it as an array. Uh, and then, and that's where I'm just, you know, looking at uh, what item this is in the array, and looking through it. And this is just, you know, built for my front end code. 
and I'll end up with uh, I'll end up <coughs> looking like this. So it's just going to iterate through that. Uh, so it's really straightforward and easy. Uh, but getting back to that one that I showed you at the very beginning of the winery, here's uh, what the winery one looks like. So I've got the tile. Uh, you can interact with the thermally still. Um, this one I opted to keep the body of that in there. And I could have pulled the, uh, the URL out and made its own uh, area for, for the input area for the URL. But it's also just easy HTML, so they can use the, uh, the traditional WordPress uh, to be in there. Because then, then it can be more flexible. So I'm always thinking about flexibility, but also simplicity. Um, and then here's my Magic Fields custom fields. Uh, so here's a producer label. So I wanted this to be part of the whole page. And there's only one of them, so it's not repeatable. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. You can see at the bottom, here's my, my wine area. So I have a wine label, um, I have a region, and I just kind of, in, in, the, uh, in the description area, it just says region, dash, state, here, 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 so they know how to input it so it's consistent. Um, I could have ultimately broken that out into region, estate, year. However, they have so many different types of ways that they had some, some didn't have states, some did. So it just would be a little clumsy, so this is more um, flexible for them. 